Oh, I'm really excited to be here. Um, I'm Stacy. Like they said, I run thebarkpost.com, um, which is a big website dedicated to all things dogs. So I've had a, a long relationship with Elias. Um, I think we first met when you were first getting started. So it's really exciting to be here and see you doing all this great stuff and so TV. Quickly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have. Um, so yeah, so my first question um, is centered around that. Um, I've watched you and, and we've both had like this crazy exponential growth around dogs, but you specifically is, has been like insane. Um, what do you think it is about dogs that has allowed you to have this insane growth? Yeah, well, you know, who here likes dogs? <laughs> So that's, that's essentially the reason why what I've done has been successful is that I'm taking pictures of something that people love and, you know, every time I post a picture, um, I feel like I don't really need my but every time I post a picture, I get people's, you know, everyone shares it. So this is my dog. Look, he's famous now. So uh, it's like everyone ends up being my brand ambassadors, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, you know, dogs are, are great subjects because they're so expressive. You know, you can you can look at any any picture of a dog and say, oh, he's he's curious or he's scared or so it's uh, it's very it's very nice to see that. And when you look at pictures of people, you know, you always see this, right? <laughs> yeah, that gets a little bit old. Um, but dogs, you know, are like this, and like this. So yeah, they have a lot of. It's it's emotions. more dynamic, I think, yeah, as yeah, a photographer yeah. to have dogs as a subject. Yeah. So when you're taking pictures of these dogs, um, what is your process for getting a story? And do you stay in contact with anybody that you've uh, photographed? Yeah. So. Um, Stories have sort of been a more new thing. Like in the beginning, I was figuring out the photography of it. Now I feel more comfortable with the photography. I'm starting to ask more questions from the owners. Um, but yeah, initially it was people saying like, hey, I didn't tell you the whole story. It's really interesting my dog does this, and I would include that. Um, but now, you know, I'm saying, is there an interesting story? Is there something funny? And it's amazing how people just sort of open up and just tell me, oh, it's so funny when he does this, or Coco's a therapy dog. and. <laughs> Um, I end up spending a lot of time, you know, oh yeah, yeah, so, okay, okay. Hey. Um, and some of it's interesting and some of it's, you know, some of it's just about the picture. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting thing and I'm getting better at telling dog stories. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sometimes when you're talking to people about their dogs, one of the coolest things is they're, they're talking about the love that they have for a dog, but it's also about um, the relationship that they have between them and a lot about like them as a person, too. So it's um, Right. It's, a, it's an intimate thing, you know. You have to respect the fact that this is a, a child to them, you know. This is something they spend a lot of time with. So you have to realize that what, the way that you represent their dog it means a lot to them. Yeah. yeah. This this dog is adorable, by the way. <laughs> um, so, what? With the paws up. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> yeah. So, do you? Yeah, that's one of my other questions. Um, do you ever recognize a dog that you've shot twice, or? Um, I know, I know that you have a lot of, and we'll get into the, like the celebrity dog stuff later, but um, just like walking on the street, how, how often does that happen? Yeah, um, I think I'm running out of dogs in the village to photograph. <laughs> um, I walk around and I'm like, oh, what's up, Coco? What's it? What's this? Turner. Turner. Um, right, so, you know, <laughs> I recognize like dogs because they're very <laughs> distinctively patterned and, and that's what I'm looking for anyway, and I remember the dog's name. Um, but yeah, you know, when I'm in the village, I'm seeing a lot more dogs that I know. When I'm going uptown, I see more new faces. And when I'm traveling, it's, mo it's almost all new faces. Okay. But it's funny when people um, know who I am and say, oh, I follow them. Oh, you follow me. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And it's, it's just me. It doesn't really register. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, so related to um, one of my favorite stories in the book that you have photographed is the Victory Dogs. Um, and so for those of you who don't know who the Victory Dogs are, they were um, a group of dogs that were actually Michael Vick's fighting dogs. And in 2007, um, actually the ASPCA and Best Friends came through and uh, rescued these dogs from uh, Michael Vick's fighting ring. Um, and it was the first time that uh, 
the that people really um, rehabilitated these dogs and said that no, these dogs deserve a chance. Um, and so it's, it's an incredible story of like rehabilitation and um, hope and you know faith in living creatures. So you met them, and I've never met any of those dogs. And I've been right. to the sanctuary and stuff. What was it like to meet uh, those those dogs? And and they're getting older. Yes. Um, so they told me that there was going to be these Vic dogs, victory dogs there. Uh, I didn't re really know what to expect besides pit bulls. Essentially, I see a lot of pit bulls. Um, but there were these two dogs that were still there, uh, Tug and Ray. And um, I'm trying to recall it. So initially, I was, you know, I was driving around the, the, this is in Utah, and we're driving around the sanctuary, and she's like, okay, so this Tug is, you know, you can't go through the fence. You know, you can't, don't put your fingers in, like, this is like something out of um, what's maybe the Sandlot or something, you know. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I was like, "Well, I have to get a photo somehow. Like, this is obviously an interesting dog." Um, so we get out of the car, and this is this big fence, and this big, the biggest pit bull I've ever seen, really, just mu you know, in incredible musculature. And he, you know, he's barking at me. Of course, he wanted to know, you know, who I was. Um, but you know, he was, he was. This dog has temperamental issues, and this dog will probably never leave the sanctuary, and that's sort of the, yeah, the those, sad aspect. Yeah, those are the dogs that got to stay. A lot right. of them went on that's, to that's live with the, family. That's the nature of a sanctuary, is that you know, this dog will probably never uh, have the opportunity to be in a home, but he'll live the rest of his life in sanctuary. And I got a picture of him over the fence with the camera, and everyone was wondering, how did you get that shot of him? I just sort of waited, waited for him. Um, and then the other dog, Ray, had had recovered from his experience and had passed the Canine Good Citizen test. Um, and so that was sort of like the the good part of the story was that if you work with these dogs, no matter what they've been through, um, there's there's a ray of light, I guess you could say, and and, and that was <clears throat> powerful, I guess, to compare the two. Uh. Have you ever had any other experiences like that where um, you know it, it touches on something a little bit deeper than what you were expecting? Yes. Um, early on in the project, there was this dog pudding who's in the book. Um, where's pudding? Yes, right there. So Pudding has some facial scars, and that attracted me as a photographer. Uh, and that was in Tompkins Square. Or sorry, yeah, it was Tompkins Square. Um, and the owner told me that the dog had been a victim of breeding abuse. And that was sort of like the first experience I had that was like, okay, this is more than just a cute dog, you know? This is, this is, this dog has a history and it's important to tell this part of the story too because people are going to be wondering why does this dog look like this. So that was, you know, initially I included the victim of breeding abuse, but that was sort of the first experience of mine that was, I realized that I was doing something more than, than just photographing puppies. Um, is, is there something that you've realized about people as a whole as you've been um, kind of looking at the world through, or looking at these dogs in the world? People as, as owners, you mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, most people I meet love their dog. They're walking them out in the cold or whatever. Um, and I, I, you know, I don't really end up meeting the people that don't treat them poor, don't treat them well. I guess that's a good thing. Um, but, you know, uh, for the most part, people love their pets. Um, like I said, they treat them like family. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, I, I make it to the shelter to sort of uh, give exposure to these dogs that haven't been treated well. But I feel like it's, it's about the dog at that point. It's not really about the people because they don't really deserve attention, I think. Um, so you started your Give a Dog a Bone project um, where you go and photograph dogs with, do you want to explain a little bit more about sure, exactly, sure. and how, so how did how did you start doing that, and when did you start doing that? Um, so, you know, my mission with the project is to tell the story of dogs, um, and shelter dogs are a huge part of the story, and I wanted to figure out a way, you know, you know how do I, 
make this into a thing. So we thought, oh, well, what if they were holding a bone? That was sort of the, the hallmark of that series. Um, and then I said, well, what if I can get people involved and support this a little bit? So that's sort of the give a dog a bone thing was allowing people to sort of get, give a dog a bone, if you will, and say, oh, I helped that dog. I sponsored that dog. Yeah. <laughs> um, so another one of the stories that I really liked in the book uh, was the story about the service dog that you photographed. And... Um, you know, the dog is kind of like looking off the camera, not directly at you. And then you said that later their their owner emailed you and said that that wasn't the name that they gave you wasn't actually their name. Um, can you finish telling that story? And you know, it's, yeah, it's really interesting. Another thing about that photo is it's the only one that's been photoshopped. Yeah. There was a so the dog was looking this way, and there was a big piece of drool hanging down, <laughs> <laughs> hanging down his mouth. And the owner emailed me afterwards and said, could you edit that out? <laughs> so I did. Um, but yeah, uh, that was sort of the first time that someone gave me a false name for their dog. Um, what was it, Phil? <laughs> or Juno? And I just took it, you know, for, I, okay, that's the dog's name, that's what you told me. And then um, I got an email like, that's actually not his name. Um, that's his street name. <laughs> uh, but it's a but it's a serious, yeah. Right, but so if you if you have a service dog and you're blind, could you imagine someone saying, "Hey, Foofy, come over here"? It would be distracting for the dog. So they have sort of a alternative name that you know. So you don't. So you're not. You know, I won't tell you my dog's name. You don't want to be rude about it, but you don't want to to be an issue if you're if the dog's working. Yeah. yeah, and some of them have like vests where if like if they are wearing the vest, then they are working, and if they're not, then they can play. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. It's yeah, and I've I've met other working dogs, guide dogs, and I sort of know that it's coming that they're not either not going to tell me their name or are going to give me a, a pseudonym, um, and they'll usually like, okay, his his name's actually you know <laughs> Bobo or something, you know. <laughs> Was was that the first time that you encountered that situation? And it was actually the, another time. She just refused to give me the name, but she said you can call him Mystery Dog. <laughs> so that's what I called him. <laughs> gotcha. Um, so as you get deeper and deeper into this this world of dog, um, is are there other things that kind of surprise you or um, that you kind of discover that you become really interested in? Um, I mean, the most amazing thing to me, what blows my mind still, is the working dogs, really, that, like what they're capable of. Um, I was just out in, in Long Island shooting a series for Canine Companions for Independence. Um, and they can turn off the light switch. They can open the refrigerator on command, open the door, pick up your keys. And <laughs> it's just like... It's mind-blowing, you know? So that's sort of where I think I'll be exploring more is working dogs and giving people an appreciation for what dogs do besides laze around the couch and spill their food everywhere and crap. <laughs> that's my dog. <laughs> Everyone's dog, right, most people's dogs. Yeah, my dog is not super well-trained, but I love her. <laughs> um, so when you're out on the street or like you're in a new place and you're not in the village where you know all the dogs, um, is there a certain type of dog where you're, you know, if you're in a room of a hundred dogs, you're like that little scruffy dog, like that's what, that's what I'm going to go photograph first. Yeah, I mean, you know, first come, first serve type of thing. But um, <laughs> something stands out, you know, you see it and you say, that dog has crazy eyes or... He's wearing a bow tie, or his hairdo, or he's a puppy. Um, so, you know, the same things that you look for and, and that catches your eye also catches my eye. I, you know, I, everyone's over here too, wow. What's up, Adam? <laughs> nice, yeah, you better. <laughs> That's my, my roommate. What was the question again? Uh, what you're drawn to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, I see some more subtleties, you know, like you might see a small dog walking by and say, oh, that's a Cairn, that's a Norfolk, 
that's a cellium, you know, it's, there's more nuances than people don't appreciate always, but, um, you know, I look for things that stand out. Well, yeah, I mean, when I was a kid, I was obsessed with, like, encyclopedias of dogs and just, like, learning, you know, what breed looks like this and what breed looks like that. Um, is there anything when you were a kid where your your parents were, like, totally saw this coming? Um, <laughs> my mom wants to say something. When he was... I almost lost my son when he was two years old and he was being babysat by my mother and he I followed, forgive her and he followed the dog out of the property onto a major road at age two following the dog and it was a it was a the dog followed him but the a man who was working on his roof saw this two almost two-year-old boy following a dog down a major street and called the police and when I was with my husband we went we were not at the when we went to pick up Elias we found out that he wasn't there and the police and us we all were trying to find him and it was the dog that he had followed that we then that was the beginning yeah. gotcha. it's a long time coming <laughs> um. and also he always talked about his dog Ruby I was going to marry my dog Ruby. <laughs> we couldn't find a ring book. that fit. That goes in the next book. <laughs> Interview family. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. yeah, but um, I've been photographing since I was a kid. My dad had a dark room in the house. Um, and now, sort of when I look back at all my archives, there's just dogs everywhere. Um, so it was a long time coming, I think. Uh, you know, it took a few people. My buddy Pascal is in the back in the red. He was sort of one of the first guys who was like, yes, you should do this. <laughs> I was like, I had a crazy idea, and he's like, yes. <laughs> yes. So, you know, the right group of people, the right build up, and that's how it happens. Cool. Um, so one of my favorite things in the dog world um, is this concept of the rise of the celebrity dog. Um, and so there are all of these Instagram celebrities out there um, with, you know, anywhere from thousands of followers to millions of followers. There's uh, Chloe the mini Frenchie back there right now. <laughs> yeah. um, you want a treat? And Gizzy. Gizzy um, is the Strand's uh, office dog and she is adorable too. She's New York dog. Um, so I noticed that there are quite a few celebrity dogs in the book. Um, well, now that I've brought out two, but do you have any favorites that you're allowed to say, or? <laughs> I like all dogs equally. <laughs> um, who else, who's in the book? Tuna, Toast, Marnie, Hamilton, Chloe, Chloe Kardagian. There's, there's a lot of that, yeah. <laughs> And Chloe. And that Chloe? Yes. They're all celebrities to, <laughs> to the right person, right? It's like... Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you're like a little bit a part of this too. Like, um, the this like Instagram celebrity, like micro-blogging, um, this, I mean, in the it's only been in the past like three or four years where this has been an actual thing. And now, you know, businesses like myself or even like a lot of these dogs have actual agents f through like CAA and William Morris. And um, it's a crazy thing. And, and, you know, Elias is one of the only like humans that we actually work with from the brand, <laughs> brand side. We normally only talk to the dogs. Um, is, you know, where do you see this going in the future uh, from, from your point of view? being kind of one of them. Right, so, you know, this is all made possible by Instagram and social media. You know, what's the app that you check most? Probably Instagram, right? So that's where people consume their, you know, and live vicariously through others. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's, it's the medium, but, you know, dog, dog, you know, m media, has been around for a long time. They've been in paintings for a long time. So it's not really a new thing in that respect. It's sort of, it's just able to just share it around the world with just a button. Yeah. So that's sort of, I think, that's gonna get bigger, of course. More, more people are gonna be, you know, have 
<laughs> phones in their pocket and access. So that's good for me, I guess. <laughs> Cool. Um, only got a couple more questions. Um, but what's the strangest thing that's happened to you while you're photographing? I know in one place in the book you talk about almost getting bit. And I have actually, working with dogs every day, that is also <laughs> something that's happened to me. Um, but what's like the craziest thing? Um, not that much. Not that many crazy things have happened. Uh, you know, I get peed on. <laughs> You know, like the walk by, I'm like standing talking to the other dog, just goes, Psst, you know, <laughs> on my leg, like you're mine. <laughs> um, I've been humped. Uh, I've had, you know, uh, notices from owners like, you must take that photo down. You know. Really? Um, yeah, so do people tell you, like, my dog can't be photographed? Like, yeah, yeah. You know, most people are totally cool with it and they're excited about it, but. Um, so you know, you, you don't really know. This is New York, and and people, you have to respect the way that they see their dog, and 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 if if they don't want to be, if they want me to portray their dog in any way, then that's fine. There's another dog right around the corner. Um, <laughs> I I uh, the, the one the one thing is sort of like I'll see a situation a dog waiting for an owner outside of a shop, and I'll just go shoot the dog, and then find the owner afterwards. And like once or twice, they've approached them, and and uh, the guy's like, "Is that even legal to just photograph someone's dog?" <laughs> and yes. <laughs> um, but you know, you have to respect their. If they don't want it published, then that's fine. Also, you know. Cool. Um, so you've had a lot of exciting things happen in the past few years. What do you have planned next? And you know, what do you want to? What do you want to do with this going forward? Um, more dogs, I think. <laughs> I'm not going to get into squirrels anytime soon. Um, but yeah, I think it's more travel. It's it's, you know, I think I've I've told the story of New York's pets pretty well. Um, but that's sort of just scraping the tip of the iceberg in terms of the story of dogs. Um, so I want to get in a car. I want to drive around. I want to see the way the dogs live their lives around the states, um, in the south. I want to see dogs in nature, like a lot of the portraits I post are, you know, tight cropped and they're mostly focusing on the dog, but there's, there's a lot of natural beauty, beauty you can integrate into photographs as well. Um, and, you know, dogs doing different things, so working dogs, shepherds, rescue dogs, um, and I think as my platform's grown, I'm better able to make that happen. Awesome. Um, I think they were going to put it out to a Q&A to the, the crowd. Yeah, time for some Q&A. Um, if you have a question, raise your hand. We'll do your best, our best to get to you, but I'm going to hand you a microphone. We have about 10 or 15 minutes, so questions, questions. Yes. Um, I was just wondering how long it takes you like to get the shot, like how much time you actually spend with the dog. Is it sometimes you get it right away and sometimes you have to spend more time? How does it really work? Um, it's pretty quick. Um, if, you, if you have a squeaky ball, the, the, the strongest reaction is, very, is the first reaction, you know, and then it, you know, they condition a little bit to it. So you have to be ready for the first shot in the first 10 frames, essentially. But if the dog's bouncing around, then you can stick around for longer. I'm having a conversation with the owner. It'll last five, 10 minutes, but usually it's, it's a minute or two. Next question. Oh, I was wondering, um, do the themes come from you or from the dogs, like on the sharp dressers? Do you kind of <laughs> think, well, let me go out today and get the sharp dressers, or do you does right, it come so, from the dog? Um, I looked through my entire archive of pictures, and I think these themes sort of emerged. Like, there's all these pictures of dogs in fancy outfits. There's all these <laughs> <laughs> pictures of dogs with their eyes closed as outtakes. Um, there's different breed categories. There's dogs wearing sunglasses. Um, <laughs> so the, the, the themes evolve sort of organically through the, the body of my work. Next question. Can you come over onto this side? <laughs> Here comes a heckle. <laughs> if you were a dog, what kind of dog would you be and why? A Pekingese, obviously. 
Now, I, I grew up with labs. Maybe that maybe that's the best answer. A Labrador, a black lab. Why? Why? <laughs> Yeah, they're, you know, they're the all-around dog, you know, they're, they're smart, not too smart. Um, they're sort of, you know, the classic dog, my classic dog, I don't know. <laughs> Cover the book, yeah. More questions? Gonna head back to the back here. That's okay, could you pass that over? Hi. Uh, would you ever take this cross-platform to like Snapchat or YouTube into the video world, or are you purely pictures? Um, I've, I've thought about that. Right now, it's it's you know the same portrait posted across platforms. Um, but right now, like I'm the only person doing this. I don't even have an assistant. Um, so maybe when that happens, they can help create that content. You know. I can only, I'm focusing on portraiture really. Um, but yeah, certainly I think there's plenty of interesting things that can happen with, like I mean initially the first project I was doing was Barking at Dogs, which is a video web series where we interviewed people's dogs about world news. Um, and I still think that's a great idea. This is with Pascal, he was the, yes, exactly, yes. Um, but it's just harder to do as one person, I think. So as my project develops, there'll probably be new types of media emerging, coming from it, yeah. Uh, hi, do you, um, are you familiar with or plan to do any collaboration with uh, Theron Humphrey of uh, Maddie on Things? Have you seen that Instagram account? Yes, beautiful, really beautiful pictures. I have not been in, in touch with them directly, but maybe as I venture out into you know, my, my travel mode, my explorer mode, we'll collaborate. I don't see why not. Come over to the other side of the room here. Hi, uh, do you personally own any dogs? Not personally right now. I grew up with labs. I know, it's, it's um, for the time being, like, I, I have a very nimble life. And uh, if, I, if I got a dog, then I probably wouldn't travel as much. Um, and I hang out with dogs all the time anyway. Um, but my, my cousins, yeah, we have poodles and... You didn't mention your favorite, by the way. <laughs> I, I take it back, they're my favorite, yeah. Um, poodles and a new golden retriever. And my, my grandmothers have labs from all over the place before, and we've had <coughs> labs growing up. So at the moment, no, but in the future, yes. Hey, Elias. Uh oh Big fan. Love your work. <laughs> um, hy hypothetical. Um, if you were trapped in the body of a dog, Pekingese, one of your favorites. My favorite. And hypothetically, if your owner was going to take you to the vet in a car to get neutered, <laughs> what would your escape plan be? We've all been be? there. What would my escape route be? Your escape plan. Escape plan? Yeah. Um... <laughs> I guess the window. Uh, I would I would tell the the vet I'm already neutered. It's cool, you know. <laughs> Nothing down there for you, you know. It's not true. <laughs> but great question. <laughs> Does anybody in this area have a question? Since I'm standing here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> really, for people that want their dog to look intact. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. My aunt's a vet, right there, so she would know. <laughs> have you, have you done that procedure? Yes. Wow. And I'm very concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Both the, the the removal and the double charge. Right. It's a little extra. <laughs> right. Um, did you notice any behavioral differences between the owners or the dogs themselves when you go from New York to Europe to California? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I think what struck me in LA, in LA, um, we're conflicting. Hello? In LA, um, I think people spend a lot more time with their dog. 
generally because they're like driving around everywhere and they can some more open space. So it felt a little different in that, in that you know they just spend more time with their dog. Um, whereas here, dogs have their walker, they have their all their friends. Um, in in Europe, you know, uh, dogs are allowed in a lot of cafes, so you know that's it, just part of the life there. No, I mean, if they're a pet, they're probably pretty balanced overall. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for temper temperamental differences, you know, a border collie is like intense. You know, a German Shepherd's intense. A, a bulldog is, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's really the the breed differences is what's the most contrast. Yeah. We have time for one more question. All right. Hmm. Um, you know what makes a dog easiest to photograph is that they attend attend to a squeaky ball. <laughs> so. If that's their toy, then, which is often the case in New York, then that helps a lot. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I think it's, it's pretty universal wherever I go, you know. Dog's a dog. He's going to be interested in, in the strange noise or a treat. Um, but the, I guess the challenging thing about traveling out of New York is finding them. Because I'm like the creepy guy, like yelling across the yard, "Hey, can I just come into your, on your property and meet your dog?" <laughs> what would you say to that? I have to coax the dog to the fence, and then they both hop up on the fence. So yeah, it's different. Yeah, different strategy for for different situations. Awesome! Thank you so much for being here tonight.